Welcome to The Rock. We hope what you watch today inspires you. And we'd love to hear your questions and comments via Twitter at The Rock of York. You can also find us on Facebook or contact us through the website at www.rockofyork.co.uk. In the meantime, let's crack on. Um, glad Danny said what he said because it's um, part of what I want to talk about tonight for a little while. With the kids being, have we got kids in? Oh, haven't we got kids in? Because I can't seem to see them. I decided that um, I would try and uh, do my little talk tonight um, with, you know, a video and quite a bit of it. So if there's too much video for you, old ones, older ones, I'm sorry, but it might just uh, be good for them. But it'll certainly get over uh, what I want to get across. We were talking this week, and the leaders, and um, we were talking about vision and uh, you know, we've just sung, sung that song about um, we need a body, and we do, and we have one. Um, but it came up that maybe people don't really understand what our vision is because, you know, you can make assumptions that um, people who come every week understand what the vision of the rock is um, because we're not very... Um, I can understand why people like liturgy. Now, do you know what liturgy is? Liturgy is where you have prayers that are written down and, and, and form in the sort of services that you do. Because if you hear it often, it goes in, you memorize it, and it becomes something that you begin to understand and know. Now, I think the one thing that is probably a problem with what you would call the evangelical type of church is that everything is so spontaneous and laid back that it sometimes means that people don't necessarily learn things and take it into their, their being, you see, because we're, well, we're here one week and we sing this one week and we sing something else another week, and it can be that you haven't really caught on to what the, the, the vision, that's why we did the video at the beginning um, of, the, um, of, of our house uh, get-together, because we thought, okay, if we play it over and over again and you keep listening, something will drop into your heart what we're really convinced about in the context of um, who we are. And uh, there's a lot of thing in, things in theology and what you would call the Christian uh, experience and understanding that are confusing, to say the least. They're, they're difficult to understand. Just take the Bible. It's difficult to understand. And uh, we are doing our best to, to explain it to people, but obviously you can't do that in five minutes. It's a process, and you're doing it all of the time. But you can see what I'm saying. We try to put things in the video there that you can say, well, at least I've, I've, I've grasped that. This is what we're sure of. And... Um, I, you know, we, it came up in this, uh, this meeting that uh, maybe we ought to reiterate what our vision is. And it's actually very, very simple. We believed some years ago um, that we were meant to tear down the religious spirit that was over our city. And if you remember, it goes back a long time that Anth had a vision. And uh, if some of you don't know about that, why don't you... Next time I'm surround, ask if you can see a copy of it. It's written down. It was a dream that he had, and it was quite specific about what was going to happen in the city. And um, those things have come to pass, and we're in the, the next stage of that. Now, what's really weird is that you immediately think of visions and dreams and things like that as, oh, this is fantastic. God's given you this. You've seen some of it come to pass, so it's automatically the end's going to be absolutely amazing. Well, that's not necessarily true, because you've, even if you take Jesus himself, he ends up dying on a cross. So not all, everything always happens and ends the way that we would like them to, but that doesn't mean it isn't victorious. That doesn't mean it isn't successful and amazing. But then, of course, we live in a world where we only have one view of what is successful and amazing, which can be a problem. But anyway, um, so our vision, you might say, well, I don't, I don't get it. I spoke a few weeks ago on the fact that what Jesus came to do in a world that was full of gods, full of religion, 
he came to actually saying, do you not get it? This is where you're going wrong because you keep insisting on making something that demands so much when actually what it is, it's about releasing you and giving you freedom and that's what Jesus came to do. And so what did all these nice people do with it? it made, we made out of the story of Jesus, his giving of his life, we made it into another religion. And we spoke on uh, Wednesday night about how, you know, we talk about in the evangelicalism about it being a relationship with God. And that sounds all very beautiful in order to get away from the picture of it being religious and the do's and the don'ts. We make it into this lovely relationship. But as I said on, on Wednesday night, what you get is that the relationship becomes as religious as, as the religion used to be. Because what have we made the relationship? Oh, yes, but it's only a relationship if you do this and if you do that and if you get this right. And it all becomes just this great big uh, difficult thing. So what we have uh, determined to do was uh, be a vessel for the Holy Spirit and for the Lord to tear down this religious spirit. Now, it's not been easy. And uh, in, in all honesty, some of you don't even understand. And this is why I'm going to use this film tonight. Because yesterday, as I was thinking about it, I really felt just a voice. Just watch the chicken run. And I thought, why do I want to watch the chicken run? I mean, it is about 17 years old. I think it was about year 2000 that it was uh, made. So some of you younger ones might not have even seen it. Uh, who's seen the chicken run? Chicken run? So it is quite popular then. And what I found was, as I was watching it, I could see that the story of our journey was actually unfolding. It was really quite amazing. And so I watched the whole thing, and I've got some um, uh, things to show you. Now, something I want to say, and it, it, it's, it's a tough thing, thing to say, uh, really, is that often when you start getting rid of the religious side of things, and we've used the word quite a lot, things can seem uh, more uncertain and less certain. And uh, some people can think, well, I just feel as though I'm a bit lost. But actually, we mustn't confuse those things with lostness, because I know that I was very certain of a lot of things a long time ago, which seems to suggest foundness, but in fact, I was believing so many wrong things that in essence, I was more lost than I was found. Now, I know that takes some getting your head around. So sometimes certainty can have an appearance of a wonderful, whoa, we've got it and everything's fine. But if we believe in the wrong things, then it's not doing as much good, is it? So I don't want you to uh, misinterpret that sense of uh, uh, a a, a non-religious religious or a free environment as, as lost because like I say I'm, I'm really glad uh, we've moved on from that because I am more certain now in the little bits that I do know than the many things that I thought I knew but I've realised now see anything that can be torn down just think about this anything that, could, that you feel that you believe that actually can be challenged and torn down can't have been very concrete in the first place. And we don't like stuff like that, do we? But it's true. Anyway, the Bible says that without a vision, the people perish. And um, I just want to add something to that. Just because you don't feel that a vision is obvious or that you can see it, doesn't mean that a vision doesn't exist, right? And that is very important. And, uh, you know, I want you to, I'm telling you what that vision is. That vision is still going on. We are making sure that right across the board, and I want to say this at this point, that Danny mentioned it, Life Zone, Urban Rev, the reason why they exist and are doing what they are doing is because we've already challenged the religious spirit. Those things would not be happening if we hadn't challenged a religious spirit. Think about it. Danny was telling me the other morning, he says, he says to his team on a Saturday morning, what is our vision? And he says, the answer comes back, to love kids. Just to love kids. Isn't that awesome? So have you noticed how there's no strings attached? It's not love kids so that. Oh. See? 
That's, that's the freedom of pulling down a religious spirit. And why, do, why am I saying this? Because most things exist only for what they can get in return. They do things. So you do your kids' work so you get bums on seats. You do your youth work so you get bums on seats. We haven't approached it that way at all. We have said we want people to know that they are loved by an incredible father and we are going to take that no strings attached. That's amazing and it takes guts and bravery, really does. And we'll, we'll see a little bit more of that in a minute, so I've said that. Okay, so let's just talk about the chicken run before we show just one clip. And I hope that I, that I haven't been a hard time to edit, so if you get more film than you want, will you just be kind and tolerate it because I, I might have done too long a bit. Or I might just shout, Stop! <laughs> Just take it off. I've tried my best, but anyway. Point is this. Let's just quickly give a background of the chicken run. We have a concentration camp imagery going on because it's not some nice little chicken farm where the grass is green and it's all lovely. And you'll see it in a little while. It's a, a very much like a concentration camp with Gestapo rule. The need to escape the bondage of the Tweedies is the utmost of importance to them because this life is not worth living. And um, for any of you who've, um, well, yeah, you'd have to be a bit old in the tooth, but uh, Steve McQueen in The Great Escape, uh, you'll see the little tie in a, little, in, in a minute. But let's just set the scene by putting this on um, because what I want you to understand that this has been the journey. And some of you know it, some of you don't know it, some of you have come in and, and, and been totally blessed by the newness of this beautiful gospel. But the rest of us have fought to find the escape, just like the children of Israel. So if you want to put this on, um, and then I'll shout stop in a minute. Have you noticed Edwina, uh, not Edwina, the one who uh, has got the little sort of blue hatty thing on? Babs. Isn't it funny how you've always got one of them, haven't you? Have you been on holiday? <laughs> Do you want me to point you out? <laughs> it's true. See, you can have a vision and you can be, you know... The ginger, the one who's doing all the plans and showing it all and getting it on. She's getting thrown into solitary and she's coming out. Have you been on holiday? It's interesting, isn't it? So you can call me ginger if you want. I'm a, a bit red. You see, the, the issue going on here, and I'm just trying to give you a picture, is how anything that is controlled, anything where you feel that you're having to lay eggs to numbers and, and, and actually stand to attention. And if you don't quite live up to the mark, you know, what, we, what was going to happen? She was going to be taken away and it was curtains. So it's, it's not a very nice way of living, is it? So we look at that. So we recognize then that when if uh, we want to be out of that and re sort of redeem from that, there's got to be some escape. There's got to be an escape. It's like the children of Israel. When they were in captivity in Egypt, the thing is that they were, were made to make bricks out without straw, and they were given a real struggle and, and a hard time. But we know later on that they even felt they wanted to go back to Egypt when they'd got out, because even when they got out of Egypt, they felt that the freedom that they were in, and we'll get to that in a minute, was actually harder than the, the uh, bondage that they were in back in Egypt. So, Ginger has a dream. And uh, if you want to go to the, the next clip, and uh, this is quite a long one, I'm sorry, but I'll let the, the movie do the, the thing for me. Are you getting it? Is it at least making sense? Good. This scene, what it was going to show you, that they keep trying that many ways to, to escape. 
that in the end, the, the chickens actually start to revolt because they'll say, there isn't even, you're going to have to find it because I'm not even very good at telling you this. You're going to have to find it. Have you got it now? Basically, say there is a million to one chance that we're going to get out of here. And little Ginger almost crying. She says, well, if there's a million to one chance, there's still a chance. Oh, isn't that hope? Are we getting it now? Come on then, put it on. That's sad. Sometimes I must admit that uh, you can feel a bit dismayed when you're saying to, to people there's a more beautiful gospel, there's something better out there, and you actually start to mention the, you know, the, 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 the green grass and the wonderful thing, and then they turn around and say, I've never heard such a load of rubbish in my life, and you keep, you know, yeah, okay, we're all right. And then you walk away and you go, <laughs> My dad used to say all the time, Lord, help us. And that's the reason. Because you recognize it's like poor old Moses got himself into a right mess, you know. Because he got so angry with the people. Because he tried to tell them what was going to happen and how it would work. But they didn't want to listen. And so it made Moses very angry. Now, isn't it sad that, that if we follow the story in the Old Testament, poor old Moses didn't get into the land, all because he couldn't convince the people of a promise of something better. Isn't that sad? So anyway, you've seen the dream. And they were saying, do it for Edwina, the one who had been butchered at the beginning. Anyway. To carry on the story, because obviously we can't watch the whole film, but just watching the, uh, giving you a few piece, uh, bits of information, she says that prayer and suddenly Rocky comes flying, a rooster, um, out of a cannon because he's been at the circus and he's lost his way a bit and he comes flying over and of course she hasn't seen the cannon so she thinks that somehow he's a, 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 a chicken that can fly and becomes totally convinced that this is the ticket out, which is all a bit of a con. But anyway, I'm just giving you a bit of a, a picture. But there's one little scene which is very interesting, and I enjoyed this. I'm not going to show you this one, but I'll, I'll talk to you about it. He's having this conversation with, um, with Ginger, and he's saying, do you know what? All the chickens have lost their mor morale. What we have to do is have a bit of a party. You know, get everybody together and sort of get a bit of a, a, a motivation uh, in order to try and make them feel a bit better. And I mean, I just found that this was really interesting because what, what uh, you find that you can, you can have your, um, uh, what, what do you call it? Your, um, oh, I forgot the word. Where's the, where's the word I was looking for? Like team building things and you can get, have some joy. You can, you can think to yourself, if we bring all these people together and just have some fun, then everybody will feel better. But at the end of the day, they are still in bondage and that's not getting them out. Now, here's the thing. The prophetic word, now I'm not trying to be clever here, but the pr prophetic voice, and if you look at the prophets in the Bible, they weren't out for a lot of fun. They weren't out for a lot of joy because actually what they were doing, they were saying, this is the way, you better do this because if you don't sort this out, you're going to end up here. So the prophetic voice is very much funless. And some of you just lately have been asking about where's the fun? And I think it's because Anthony and I are more prophetic. I can tell you what, we can tell you things that are going to happen way before they happen because we just know, we just feel it in our hearts. And when you know that sort of thing, that also doesn't lead to much fun, does it? When you think, I know something here. You, are you with me? So you could say, oh, let's just have a, a team building session. It'll be great. But if you know already what's going to happen, the team building session doesn't help a thing. Does that, does that make sense? I'm just trying to be very, very honest with you here. So you've got all this going on. Let's, and and you've, you've got Rocky saying... Here's the thing, if you want um, uh, to motivate someone, don't mention death. That's great. That's what this is saying. This is what you do in America. And, and so Ginger replies, yes, but here we tell them the truth. Oh, 
that's interesting. And then he goes, no, but if you want them to perform, you have to tell them what they want to hear. Oh, and she's going, no, that's not the way we, we carry on here. Because in, in her head, that the major issue was escaping the bondage. Do you get it? It wasn't making the chickens feel nice in that situation. It's escaping the bondage. So we have this situation going on. Then, of course, they, they have a wonderful time because he puts on a dance. And they all have a great dance together and everybody's happy. And then something happens with Babs because all of a sudden she either slips or whatever and flies through the air and lands over the other side of the room. And she's convinced that she is, do you say flew, flown, flied? What's the word? <laughs> I don't even know what it is. Flown. Is that right? Really, it sounds wrong. She's convinced she's flown. Why? Because there was such an awesome environment of fun and they're all having a great time. She slips and she, she, she goes through the air and she's convinced she's flown. But she hasn't. Are you with me? The stuff that we can get involved in that actually convinces us we can do stuff that we can't, but we're still in the bondage that we're in. See, the point is chickens don't fly. And we know that, don't we? Anyway, what motivates then the whole situation of bringing the chickens back on, on board? It's because the Tweedies suddenly decide that their future is uh, a pie factory and so once the machinery arrives in order that the um, pies can be made, and of course there's a whole scene where the, you know, you'll have to go watch it, it's great, where the f th they have to see for themselves what is their end if they stick in this environment. So what is the word we're bringing into this now? They're terrified out of their skins they are afraid and it's fear that motivates them to pull together and we've said this so often once you take fear out of the equation it's amazing how motivation gets lost and and I I'm just going to keep banging this 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 drum we have got to find the motivation to carry out our vision when we are in, a, in, a, in an understanding of the love of God, the kindness of God, the compassion of God, because the motivation used to be fear. And it's amazing. You take that fear away, how the motivation just, well, I don't need to. What's the point? I don't, are you with me? And we've got to find that. Anyway, we know that they all pull together. And uh, what we have at the end here, uh, and I'm not at the end of the talk, I just want to show you this end, end scene, and then I'm going to wrap it up with something that uh, hopefully you'll, it'll just make it all pull together. So do you want, just to put it on, basically, it's right at the end, they've come up with a plan, they've built an aeroplane, and they're about to, so just pop that on and then we'll move on. Awesome. So I've shown you the end. And what's awesome, they become free range. I love that. Free range chickens. Babs is still Babs. Did you notice she was still, what a lovely holiday. Must have to drive you nuts. But you see, the wonderful thing about that, if you look at it, is that you've got what is fought for by one group is being benefited by another group. So all the little chickens now all happy little chickens are listening to the stories of the victory of how the others escaped that most awful place, all that bondage, all that uh, rule, all that control. Uh, and you could say, well, is it happy ever after? But you see, <laughs> it's interesting because what happens is that, and this is why I wanted to say where I was coming to, what can happen in that place of freedom there can be no purpose because all of a sudden, did you notice they're all playing games? How long do you play badminton for? How long do you play cricket for? How long do you wander around and have a lovely time before you suddenly get fed up? Because the issue was, while ever they had a purpose in the tearing down of the Tweedies, 
It gave them something to fight for. Now, we talk often in, in, in this place about how the, having a common enemy always motivates people. And in, in, in essence, our, uh, uh, our enemy, the enemy that we have had, has been this religious spirit that we were wanting to bring down because we wanted to honor the name of Jesus and his gift and his love and his, and his wonderful gift to us. But you see, once the young ones grow up, that that they have with only the stories of the past becomes their normality. And then their normality has just as many problems as the bondage that the others were in. Now you'll say, well, it's not because it, at least they've got grass and at least it's nice and this, that and the other. But you see, the, the, I remember having a and sorry, Connie, for bringing you up, but I remember having a conversation with our Connie many years ago, and I'm saying to her, but Connie, you've had far more freedom than I've ever had in my entire life. And I'm convinced that I've given her everything that she needed because my things I gave her, my mother wouldn't let me have. You see, so I'm thinking, freedom, freedom, that's brilliant. Stop complaining, you know. But then you, she came back with an incredible answer. But this is my normality. This is what I know and understand. Therefore, there isn't that sense of having to have fought for anything. Therefore, it's just normal. Now, the point I'm trying to make is that people who come into our place have no idea what they have been delivered from because what we are giving in this place is total acceptance. We're giving absolute love and understanding. And so, they can often feel, well, what is the, what is the point? Because they're not fight, we're not fighting the Tweedies anymore to, to, you know, to make it with the story. And uh, there are a few things, though, that I want to bring to you that can be the enemy that we can fight in this new place of freedom. The first one is obvious. It becomes apathy. A, a, an apathetic attitude, well, well what's the point then? There is a great point because whether we actually see uh, religion as a thing of uh, just what is in the Bible and just that religious information, all of us are, are tied up with so many things that hold us down. And even though we might say, well, there isn't a, a, an actual hell that we're being delivered from at the end, in the sense of a real destination, each one of us are living hells in our lives because of situations and upsets and unhappiness. And we have to be able to say, this is something that we can actually bring deliverance from, actually find ways of bringing love into the situation so people can be free. Thing is, there's another thing that's interesting, boredom. I, I like what um, Rob Bell uh, says in his, his new book, um, How to Be Here, he talks about boredom is that meaning that there's nothing interesting here. And that's something that we can all find really difficult when we feel bored. There's nothing interesting here. And so that is an enemy that we have to fight. We have to say, this isn't the truth. There is something interesting here. We have been talking in, on Wednesday nights about prayer, and I'll tell you what, it's been very interesting. If, if you haven't been there, that's fine, but it's certainly been interesting. Who, who said, who's been and said, would you say it's been interesting? Well, there you go. So there's something interesting. Next thing that you've got to uh, have a problem with in this area of freedom, in the free-range faith or free-range uh, chicken coop that we've got, you've got the problem of cynicism where there's nothing new here. I'll tell you what, there's new revelation happening all the time. New revelation is, is coming. But we can be convinced there's nothing new. And then the other thing that we can fall foul of is the feeling of despair, that nothing matters anymore. And so we don't give our hearts, we don't give our, uh, our time, we don't give our finance, we don't just believe in it anymore because it doesn't matter. And then, of course, the, the, the other enemy that we've got to be careful of, and if you watched what was happening on that last clip, the nostalgia 
of the old ones who are telling the, the new ones about all that happened can leave the younger ones with the sense, well, there's, what, is the to, what is the to do? What is the to do? So we have these sad situations, the, these enemies uh, that we have to pull down. So I am looking for each one of us to be free range hens in an, in an understanding of deliverance from a most horrible place where we were, just like the children of Israel. But if you think about them, they were monkeys, weren't they? When they get out and they're in the, the, the wilderness and they've got their free range experience, they were suddenly not happy. And, and, and it's, they wanted to go back. Why did they want to go back? Because in some respects, they felt that it was safer. There were certain things that were much more uh, reliable and they were daft. Think about it. They were daft. And so we don't want to forget where we've come from. But at the same time, we've got to understand what is demanded in this new place. And what is demanded is that we fight the enemy of boredom, the enemy of cynicism, the enemy of despair, that nothing matters, and certainly the enemy of nostalgia, and rather say, no, the vision is absolutely alive and well, and we are going to fulfill that vision and keep fulfilling that vision and encouraging every generation that joins us that the purpose is to keep tearing down that which takes us into bondage. Anything that takes us into bondage. So I'm looking tonight for people who are going to rally a bit like cheerleaders to the vision of the rock. Silence. It's fine. I believe absolutely that what we have been called to do, we have done, and we have done it uh, with a pure heart, and we are on track. And sometimes that feels a little bit difficult to, to, to say that when certain things are seen, and you know, you, you can get a little bit despondent at things that you see, but you've got to believe that what we were told to do, and it was the race marked out for us. And so I want to encourage all of us to take on board. I mean, if I was to say to you tonight, what has the rock been for you in the context of your journey? Can you say, yes, it's, it, it's, it, I'm glad it was there for me. See, that's the point, isn't it? I'm glad it was there for me. I'm glad that when I was excluded by other things or when I was rejected or when I didn't live up to the mark or when I was uh, not all I should be and, and felt that I couldn't be this, that and the other, when I went to the rock, they accepted me. See, that's what we are. And we were talking the, the, the uh, Wednesday night this week, we were talking about how Jesus said that you've made my father's house a den of thieves when it's supposed to be a house of prayer. And many people misunderstand what that means. But you see, house of prayer doesn't mean a place where you come and sit and you, you know, put your hands together and you talk to God. A house of prayer means a house of inclusion, a place where anybody, any foreigner, because remember we're talking in, in ancient language now, where any foreigner, where anybody who was excluded in the sense of their, um, because Anthony was talking about the fact of eunuchs and, and, and you know, the, the various um, lists of people that weren't included, what was said was, this is a, a house of prayer where they Everybody is con in included, and that's what we have done. And I feel that what needs to happen is we need to rejoice in that and really become um, the cheerleaders of it rather than being, oh, this is hard, this is hard work. Let's be cheerleaders of it. Because like I was saying at the beginning, the, um, there are recipients those young chicks at the end, and that's why I just wanted to use the film to try and get over the point. The young chicks at the end 
were recipients of something that was quite amazing at the cost. When you think about it, it's why we celebrate, isn't it, in, um, uh, is it November time, when we do the poppy day, um, you know, because what we're saying is we as the generations now that have benefited from that fight, we are not going to forget. Now, this is the point. Sometimes we do forget in the sense that we get moaning about the state of our country. We, we get upset at the National Health Service. We get upset at the government and all this, that and the other. And we can get our eyes off what was given to us. Do you get me? Freedom was given to us, and we're glad of that freedom. But if we're not careful, instead of celebrating it, we find fault rather than saying, do you know what? I am going to be uh, a celebrator of the, of the fact that I have received something so wonderful. So I'm trusting tonight that you will understand that, that our, uh, our role, our task, our vision of tearing down the uh, religious spirit is something that we are not going to apologize for. We're actually very proud of it, and we're glad we're doing it, and uh, the victory is ours. Victory is ours, and I believe it. So I want to ask a question. Who's, who's going to step it up? Who's going to put on a rah-rah skirt and do some, some good old cheerleading for the rock? Because we need it. We need it. Please, in all that you're doing, I mean, it was lovely what uh, Beth said at the leaders the other day. She said, we have somebody in the council who everywhere she goes, she sings the praises of the Rock of York. That's somebody in the council because they believe in what we are and what we do. And I feel sometimes that it's sad that the uh, lady in the council might actually be more vocal and more for than sometimes we are ourselves. So I want to encourage you. Will you bodily, physically, Danny sang it, needs a body. Love needs a body. Will you be a body? Will you give your time? Will you give your, your finances? Because the point is, if this doesn't do what it does, Danny and Beth and the departments can't do what they do. And so we've got to decide, is it important to us? The answer is yes. And we're not doing it because we get something in return necessarily, although it would be nice if we did, but that's not the purpose. And so I want you to rise up. The, ours, there are still enemies to take down. And uh, like I said, boredom, cynicism, all of those things. Think about it. What's going on in your heart that we can actually fight? Because often, if you can have something to fight, you might just be motivated a little bit more. But I don't want us to be motivated by that. I want us to be motivated by love. So I hope you've heard my heart. Uh, don't be a babs to me, will you? Please. I can do without babs, you know. Is that enough? Um, so, will you just stand with me? Because, I, I, you know, I would like to believe that what I've said has touched your heart and that it motivates you and encourages you. Um, so, I'm just going to, to, to ask, ask the Lord just to help us. Lord, just like in the film where Ginger puts her head in her hands and she says, Lord, help us. We're saying that because we need help. Lord, we want to be so motivated with the message of this incredible, beautiful gospel that we just can't stop talking about it. I, I ask, Lord, that we will have the desire to share, to speak, to encourage, to bring in, to work, to give, all those things in order that our task might be completed, that we might fulfill the work that you have given us to do, and we might be able to hold our head up high like we've been singing tonight because you are with us and you're giving us the victory um, and we are totally confident that the job you've given us to do, we are doing. So I ask your blessing over all these people in this place tonight. I ask, Lord, that... This word that I have brought is not going to be heavy in their hearts, 
but it will be encouraging that they'll realize that they need to, to um, uh, rise up and, and put their hand to the plow in order that we might uh, do your, your work and, and, and really share this most beautiful gospel. I ask these things in your name. Amen. 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 Okay, we're done. Thanks for watching. You can find out more about all the Rock is doing locally and internationally at www.rockofyork.co.uk. And why not support The Rock from wherever you are? Just hit the donate button now to help us help others.